In this video, we will talk about how to use tables and formulas in Connection Builder for Tecla Structure. Usually when you want to create a connection in Tecla Structure, this is how you do it. Say we want to create a simple share play connection, we click on the simple share play button, click on our first part, click on our second part, and it will create a connection for us. However, we're not done here. According to this table, Depending on the beam size, the number and size of the bolts required, the plate thickness and the weld size all change. So what we have to do is go into the go into the connection properties and change the variables accordingly. Change the plate thickness, change the bolt number, change the bolt size and the weld number. Weld size. And this can be time consuming when we have a lot of connections to go through. But Connection Builder allows us to streamline this. And here is how. So first, click on Connection Builder. Next, go to the Connection Builder tab and click on a Builder Connection. Let's call our connection Shear Plate Control. And for the connection parts, the maximum part will call it two and the minimum we'll call it two as well because we need at least two parts in order to make a connection and we'll just use two parts in this case for the connection points we don't need to select any points for this type of connection so we'll leave it at zero for the sub connection list we'll add a macro and we have to use the TS macro which is specifically designed for this purpose All right, for the for the macro itself we'll save as shear plate And for the connection parts, there's two parts because we selected two parts, main one and main two, main main zero and main one. If we select th multiple parts, uh, if there's more than two parts, it will give us m uh, multiple parts to select from. Remember, the order actually matters. So go from main zero and down. For points, we can just leave blank because there isn't any points. For controls, the type of uh, is a connection. It's not a macro or plugin. It's a connection. For macro name, you can name it whatever you want. We'll leave it at TS macro one for now. For the connection number, we can easily find this out. For example, we want this connection to be uh, the same connection. We want the connection number we want right now. It's this type of connection. So we just go click on this the Tecla connection, go to inquire, and it'll show us what the connection number is, which is 146. The sketch will go with standard sketch. and we will save it click OK click OK now by clicking OK we have saved our saved our connection we just made now let's load it up again share play control now let's edit it under controls and variables, we want to change the vari uh, We want to change the variable depending on the play profile. So, if the play is a W10, we want to change the the bolt number, bolt size accordingly. If the play is a W12, we want to change the bolt number, bolt size, and all the other variables accordingly. Now, how do we know what these variables are called? Well, a simple uh, there's a simple way to do this. First, go to properties for the connection. And say we want to know what the variable for bolt number is. So right now, the bolt number is at 8. And we'll save this as try1. Next, let's change this to something else. Let's change this to 6. And save it under try2. OK. Now that we saved it, we can go over here under useful functions and click compare files so the file should be under attributes within our Tecla structure model folder and 3240 main under attributes let's look for try1 which is over here 
same thing, try two will be under the same folder, and then we click compare. And this will compare the differences between the two files, which can both be open in Notepad. So the first difference is try one and try two the name, which we don't worry about. The second difference is also a name. The third difference is the MB, number of bolts. We change it from A to 6. So this is our variable name. Now that we've got our variable name, we can jot it down somewhere. And I've jotted down the variable names for bolt quantity, bolt diameter, plate thickness, and wall size on this notepad. MB, diameter, TPL1, W5. OK. So let's do number of bolts first. So for variable, enter NB. For formula, we click on the formula button. So this will allow us to adjust the number of bolts depending on what type of plate it is. All right, so first we want to go to table variables and to load a table. Now this is why we wanted to save the shear plate control first. So under connection data, in our Techler structure models folder, look for the look for the connection we just made, which is shear plate control. Here it is. Now we want to copy this file, standard plate, standard shear plate, which looks like this. Basically, this is just a text file of the table we have just seen. We want to copy this. Into our folder. Now, standard shear play folder. Good. Now that we've done this, we look for the folder we just made under shear play control. Standard shear play. And we click on this button, which is the table function. The first variable will be our table file, the second variable will be a condition, which we'll use as a Boolean condition, true or false, and the third. Our uh, third one is the result. This is the result we want to change the our variable into. So, for our second, uh, for our second variable, we want to use a condition, which is boolean condition, and we want to use starts with a b. What this means is that if the if our beam profile's name starts with the same name as column one of this table. For example, if our beam starts name starts with W8, it will use it will use this string of number, uh, this string of data for it. If it starts with W14, it will use this string of data for it. So select part part two, which is beam two, and select profile of the beam. So under variables, select profile, profile two, string number, uh, string name, and compare that to field one of our table. So going back to table variables, compare that to field one of our table. Close bracket, comma, and the result will be field two because field two signifies the bolt number. So once again, if the beam two profile name start um, the start of that name matches with column one of this table, say profile name matches C10. Then bolt number will be changed to field two, which is num which is two. Similarly, if the beam is W thirty, the beam the bolt number will be changed to eight. Click OK to have the formula here, and set it. Now we can go back to this formula and check it by clicking on formula and check. So this we have to go back, select part number one, select part number two, and click on the middle mouse button. Now the result equals seven. This means uh, this means that our formula works because it actually changed managed to change the bolt number to seven by reading the the beam profile. Now if the result is something say like array, it probably means there's something wrong with our formula. So this is a good way to check to see if our formula is correct. Similarly, we can do the make formulas using table formulas for the other variables, such as diameter, plate thickness, and well size. So let's do this. 
as you, s you can see the formulas for them are essentially the same except for the, for the results because they're field 2, field 3, field 4, field 5 because we read it from the columns number 2, number 3, number 4, and number 5. Also, for bow diameter, the column 2 is, column 3 is actually in inches, but the program uses millimeters. So we need to convert it by, convert inches to millimeters by multiplying 25.4. If you are, if you make a table that's in millimeters, then you wouldn't need to do this conversion. So, first let's go with diameter. You can use a copy and paste this or type it in yourself. And diameter is in decimal. So field 3 multiplied by 25.4 set TPL1 field 4 also in decimal set and W5 weld size also in decimals field 5 set and weld size Save it, click OK, and click OK. And we've saved it. Now let's set the dialog form. So this basically sets the inter user interface. First, let's load the connection up. Share play control, load it, go to item settings. These are the two objects. So we can have a quick preview of what the user control interface looks like, the user interface looks like by clicking try. So right now our two objects are overlapping each other because this is the two objects location. This is a coordinate for the top left corner of the object. And you, as you can see they're both 10 10. 10 in the X and 10 in the Y location. So they're overlapping. Let's change this. So let's change the second object to X location 10, Y location say 40. Click set and let's see. Now the item 1 is over here and item 2 is below it. Very well. Click OK and saved. Now let's put this in action. Double click on loop plugin. Click on select call connection. Go to the connection we were just doing. Share play control. Select. And then we can click on, oh let's, hold on, let's first get rid of our um, macro from Tecla structure. Okay, once we selected the connection, we just have to click on this one once, and then select part one, part two, and it will create our connection for us. Now, if we change this beam to a different profile, let's say 21. Click modify. Notice how the size of the beam changes and the connection changes with it. So this is how you use tables and formulas in Connection Builder. Thank you.